Thank you for stopping by. I'm DJ Zak from K Poppin on Arirang Radio, and you are listening to our segment, Casa Love. On Casa Love, we sit down with our guests and talk about K pop lyrics, act out the situations, and give our own thoughts as well. We hope you enjoy this episode. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Caffeine high. What's that? I don't know. Like, I think I'm high off of caffeine. Don't you drink a lot of coffee every day, though? Well, so <laughs> I, I do recording, and my listeners know this. We do the re- weekend recordings mm-hmm. on Wednesday, and so I have a five thirty wake up call. Oh my god! Um, and <laughs> it depends on what time I start drinking my first cup of coffee. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times when I come into the studio, I start drinking coffee in the car. Mm-hmm. Oh, so yeah. by the time like the caffeine starts to hit, it's mm-hmm. like right after the first hour so mm. it kind of gets me through the second hour mm. and the chaos of all the interviews and stuff like that so i'm pretty good when i go home but normally on a 5 30 wake up day i start drinking coffee when i have breakfast because oh, okay. the drive to work uh, on a wednesday is mm-hmm. really tiring like i'll be stuck in traffic and like i never used to understand why people like fell asleep at the wheel mm-hmm. because i was like how can you do that i understand that now uh, that's that's really scary. I don't. So I was I was gonna say that because like okay, both of you guys drink coffee. I know that. Mm. So do you guys? What is your method of coffee delivery? Like like, like do you mean do you make it at home? Do you have a I machine? I make my yeah. I have. Or like, I make do, my do you have coffee. like the capsule machine or? No, I have like an actual like espresso machine, but mm. it's a little bit more compact. It's like a family okay. owned one. So what it does is like I have the I put my beans in the top and then it mm. grinds it like per mm. if I'm making it like a cup or like a, a shot. Um, it only has like those two options. So shot, like single shot or like cup. Mm. Okay, okay. Um, oh, that's like mine. Yeah. yeah. And then it like it has a side dispenser where I fill up water and then the tray uh, puts out, you know, the espresso like Mm. round cylinder mm-hmm. of the press and then mm-hmm. you throw it out <laughs> you know you'd think explaining an espresso machine would be easy but i can it's see you str- <laughs> you struggle through that just now <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, how do I explain this? um so i bought it a few years ago i uh, still use it but i've gotten really lazy over the years uh, so there's a lot of really like decently priced just black coffee instant mm. coffee oh mm-hmm. yeah that's like in packets uh, like no sugar no cream added just black coffee like the k the k brand is that what you're talking about no i'm talking yeah there's a lot of different brands mm. out there i have like a hazelnut one like yeah, yeah. so oh. i just use a few packs of those in the morning okay. sometimes and then i i buy syrup separately mm. to make oh, my own okay, coffee okay. at home i mean what about you what do you would you just go and buy it i i have the capsule oh, okay so i'll do that or i'll buy it outside i'm mm-hmm. If you see, I, I can drink up to like four cups a day. So. Oh my God, yeah, me too. I used to do that. I can't drink coffee that much anymore. Really? That's that's why you said like I I was on a I was on a um, caffeine, high. caffeine high. But like, I think at this point I have so much coffee every day that it's completely ineffective. I think like I'll have a little bit of a kick in the morning and that's it. Like I don't. I used to be able to drink coffee and go to bed. Oh, me too. I do that now. I, it's totally unaffected me. Not anymore. Um, My aunt my mom never complained about this but my aunt would also (laughs) complain like if she has coffee after a certain time Mm. her heart started beating really fast and she Mm. started getting like a little uneasy Mm -hmm. i think i'm kind of hitting that level i remember one day my my team and i we went to go eat dinner and Mm. then we ordered like tiramisu and stuff like that so like the perfect combination with that is black coffee oh yeah and so Mm. i was like i don't care what time it is i'm gonna have black coffee on my way home, I started getting like, uh, yeah, like, like, yeah. I was like, "What is this?" And then I couldn't sleep, mm. and I was like, "Oh, I think I'm getting caffeine sensitive." So yeah, I'm a little hyper. <laughs> we're, we're I round love it. Round. We're a little hyper today. Yeah, the Isaac shot out of a cannon today. Let me tell you, I don't know what's going on. If here. people start turning, and they might think I'm like high off of bed, beds at the moment because I'm like, you know, my finger. But uh-huh. my finger actually doesn't hurt. Surprisingly enough, after the show last week, I I never took painkillers. Really? Yeah, because and I, and they stitched me up. Ladies and gentlemen, before before we were before the show started, Isak showed me a picture of her finger with the stitches, and oh. I was like, I was like, that is disgusting. <laughs> normally, <laughs> normally that for makes our, me so sick. Normally for our Korean staff, I keep asking everybody's like, oh, can you see like disgusting stuff? And then like most of our staff is like, yeah, 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 show me, show me, show me. I didn't even ask these two. I was like, here, and they're like, oh god, wait, what? what the- <laughs> this grotesque finger in my face. I'm like, Ugh, I, can't, I cannot look at wounds. 
or blood or anything like that. Like it freaks me out. <laughs> Tia's over there like, oh, 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 she's freaking out. Tia didn't really care, honestly. She's no, more. <laughs> I know Tia's facial expression. Mm. She might not be like giving mm. the big reaction, but she's like, mm. yeah, mm. she was okay. uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah very uncomfortable. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. What are, how are we starting this show today about coffee and wounds? Yeah, like, <laughs> I mean, perfect combination. <laughs> so you guys have been good, right? Like in the last week. I mean, you know, just to... <laughs> have you guys been surviving the heat? Because like mm. this is ridiculous right now. I am really scared of my electricity bill next month. Oh no, my! my I'm gonna be terrified. My utility bill, my quality came out oh this God. past week, and that How was many from zeros was on the, it. And <laughs> that was from last month, not oh, this oh, month. Okay. It was from last month, and mm. it was still higher than it was oh, last God. year. So I'm I was so like, scared. I mean, they they um they raised, raised the it. The what? The electricity? Yeah, electricity and gas. Really? Everything. The, yeah. the Korean government raised the Oh, thanks. I mean, I don't use much gas in the win- in the summertime. Like, I, it came out to like eight. No, but the winter. Or something. In the winter, I, it's over. Mm. I, let, I, let, I let that that thing run See, all I'm, day. I'm the opposite. Like, uh-huh. I can I can stand some heat. Like, I, I can manage it. And I don't complain in the summer. In the winter, nonstop complaining. Like, really? I can't handle the cold. Really? Pidinim cannot handle cold very well. So like in the in the summer too, you know how like everywhere has like air conditioning. Yeah. I'm the only one holding like a jacket everywhere I go. That's 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 my true. entire team has tamios. Oh. They have they have blankets <laughs> because they get cold. What I'm is... the I, every time they come, I'm like, I I remember in the winter time we came here in the in the winter and Pidinim literally looked like an indigenous like an Eskimo like she was wearing the hood and everything. I was like I was like are you okay? That's me. I do that too. She walked in like you couldn't even barely see her face. See, I was like, it was like this Whoa. is this is why I love having Joel on the team because like when it, when Joel wasn't here and it's just Tia Pinyim and then like my writers and then our Kamdungi Masa, I'm the only one that's not cold. Yeah. And so like it, me and you, thank you Joel for no, ba- I mean, balancing it out because being hot blooded over here, I'm the only one looking like the crazy person. Everyone's in here looking like they're in a big store and freezer, <laughs> and then me and Isak are over here sweating in the middle of winter. It's wild. I don't know. <laughs> oh, but that's why I think I've told my listeners this. I have a lot of tank top turtlenecks mm-hmm. because I get so hot in the studio <laughs> in winter. So like if I go out, I still need a turtleneck uh-huh. during the winter time. But I don't want a long sleeve over a long sleeve over a long sleeve. Right. So I have a lot of tank top turtlenecks mm-hmm. to cover my throat when I leave the studio right. and keep me warm. But have still wow. bare arms under my cardigan so that I can breathe in the studio if not with the heater on and then I have like 10 members in the studio and then they're like guys and they're like you know this big and then like they're talking I'm talking they're laughing and then this whole studio has the heater on I'm dying <laughs> I'm like I the only DJ that asks can we turn on the air a little but bit you know what though <laughs> if it's hot in the studio like that's better for your speaking voice isn't it I don't care. <laughs> oh, you're don't you're care. way past Karen. I don't care. I don't care if heat is better for my throat. I don't care if humidity is better for my throat at that time. Uh, yeah, my bangs will start showing. Yeah, there you go. Basically, <laughs> I'll, you're willing to take the hit just you yeah. know for a little bit of professionalism, yeah. you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. I'll just drink a lot of water yeah. or co- well, no coffee under the table. Because <laughs> you know what they say? Um, there who was it? Akon or some singer? Uh, Neil maybe? I forget. But they said that when they go to the studio to record music, they even in the middle of summer they turn the heat all the way up. So it's like Jim Jirban, like I a think sauna. That's in too there. much. Because well, I don't know. I mean, he's a multimillionaire, so he's doing something right. <laughs> but you know, he, that's what like uh, a lot of singers say that they do that. It's wild. Michael Jackson too. He did that. That's, Isn't that crazy? Wow. Yeah, I don't know. Hyun Jin Young, Hyun Jin Young, Go Jin Young, Go that Hyun Jin Young. He mm-hmm. gains weight so that he can have a better vocal uh, sound. That when he I mean, that's a thing because he he's like, I need my power drum mm. to be bigger so mm. that it it makes. And then because Koreans like very skinny people on stage, he will lose weight for a comeback. Really? How is he healthy? I mean, who knows? But you know what? <laughs> I love making music and I love singing and all that stuff, but I would not do that. Like, no, that's, that's too much for me. I don't... I, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Mm-mm. No. But I do understand certain artists or celebrities that are very particular about, like, their dressing room and, like, the humidity level and the mm-hmm. temperature because that really does make or break a performance. Mm-hmm. So I understand if like some people are like, oh my God, there's such a diva. They're like, oh, they, wanna, they want the temperature to be this and they like the humidity level has to be this. I was like, babe, that person is making billions of dollars. That's right. You know, Mariah Carey, if she doesn't have those 12 dozen roses in her room, she can't do a good performance, apparently. I don't apparently. know. <laughs> 
Yeah. Apparently. Wow. We really shot out of a cannon today. Let me tell you, we just all over the map with the cut with the subjects. Oh no, we are, no, that's fine. <laughs> that's what we always today. Do. We're gonna be kind of all over with the feelings though, because this mm-hmm. song is. Mm, this is intense. It was hard for me to get like like listening listening to this song and like reading over the the points uh, and stuff. I was like I was like I'm not sure exactly what we're supposed to be talking about because there's so many different things going on in this song and explaining. I feel that if anybody has ever been in a relationship, mm-hmm. you've gone through this. Okay, like these are the emotions that you go through. In like your first relationship, mm. I think mm. like your first or second, like more serious mm. relationships, a lot of these feelings kind of come out. I mm. think because mm-hmm. it's all over the place. That's right. It's, you don't know how to navigate the navigate the map. It's so what's the word strong? <laughs> like like listening to the song is like I, I, I'm sorry, <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm sorry. So it's a girls' date track. So Tia, could you tell us a little bit about the song? Yes, yeah, so the title is Chare Jobaya, Nothing Lasts Up. What is up with this English title? Yeah. Okay, girls Day, can you tell us why you guys had this? This makes no sense. Chare Jobayo is like completely different than nothing. Actually, Nothing Lasts Up doesn't even make sense, I don't think, does it? Maybe at least if Nothing <laughs> Lasts would have worked, but like. Yeah, Nothing Lasts. Mm, yeah, but... Nothing Lasts Up. Hmm. Been, yeah. I had to double check the English title. <laughs> is this the official one? Yeah. Like the one that's like on the album? Uh, not the album, but one the K uploaded a video mm-hmm. of their music uh, video, and this was the English title on it. And mm. normally, you know, like one the K or CJ or any of them like uploaded <laughs> it, they got the okay from the company. Right. So I'm guessing that's like the most official we can get. Google has a different translate for really? this as the title. Oh. Like if you type it up in Google, there's like another translation of it, which is a little bit more oh. believable. But I'm okay. Every, I think every single company should just call Isaac and be like, all right, you're the one no, person no, to do, do it. No, don't do that. Because <laughs> there's some other song titles out there that I think are really like, cute like the way that they name them even uh, though they might be a little weird i mm-hmm. think like the weirdness is kind of okay but like yeah this is this is it's a big pet peeve of mine me i mean <laughs> just looking at the title you can kind of tell that this was a korean korean mm-hmm. company back when they came out mm-hmm. but this, this came out in 2010 yes so it makes old. sense mm-hmm. 13 years ago can you believe it 13 so this, years ago, I was in college. <laughs> <laughs> this is the time where people like would wear like weird English t-shirts. Oh, no, we oh. still do that, huh? It yes, used sir. to be really bad. When yeah, I first it was went, really oh my bad. Gosh. It used to be like, I was Everywhere. so offended. No, it was like, it would be zero sense. Like this at least kind of makes sense, but it, it would just be <laughs> random words just strung together. It was really bad back in the day, but yeah. No, we yeah. know what you mean. We've uh, come a long way. <laughs> Gross Day releases in 2010. Oh my God. 2010, that was 13 years ago. We getting old out here, y'all. I don't know. Mm. Very long time ago. I mean, one thing to point out though, is this is the first album or song with the new members so right, originally right. there were four members one member mm-hmm. left and then they added harry and yua yura, mm-hmm. yura. Mm-hmm. and so this is the first album that they all came together and debuted together mm-hmm. and apparently they got a little bit of like a buzz right. around here and mm-hmm. then they really blew up with kide kidehe mm. i just had like war flashbacks in that song <laughs> I used to we used to listen to that song when I was a trainee. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> wow! Any trainee song will give you oh, that kind of an uh, deja vu. Right. So uh, the English title makes no sense at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, nothing lasts. Yeah, but tarajobaya pretty much means like there's no use treating them well. Is yeah, literally right. what the title translates mm-hmm. into. So you guys kind of get the feel, feel or vibe of the the like what we're going to be talking about today. I think Tia and Dora are definitely going to be able to talk a little bit about, you know, some of the lyrics oh, yeah. as we dive in. Oh, yeah. But um shall we just yeah, start well, off and start. So we're all Joel, you're supposed to bring your best girl voice <clears throat> today. I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep a straight face. <laughs> We're supposed to be girlfriends, mm. and it's just us three girls talking. Like, like I'm supposed to be super serious in here, but I'm but sorry. Like, oh my god! Like we're supposed to be like having so much fun today. I mean, with my voice, I'll be the the chain smoking girlfriend. <laughs> like I don't. Hey, I'll Simpson. try to give you my best valley girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we know what your valley girl sounds like. I know like. I'm gonna be my best valley girl today. Okay, uh, let's do you, you ready? <laughs> I don't think so, but okay, we'll go ahead. Oh, try to look, try to look away as much as possible. No, uh, oh my gosh. Okay, okay, you ready? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> See what's doing to my voice? <laughs> uh, I think we needed that before we went into the actual skit. Okay, music. 
you. Ah, oh, Tia girl, oh my god, what is up with this early morning SOS? I'm still half asleep. Mm-mm. Right. <clears throat> no, no, no. Right, no. <laughs> right. Don't you have a date today? Why do you need us? <laughs> I hate you so much. That's not in the script. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys... <laughs> If you're my friends, you need to be by my side at all times. Help a girl out, will you? Oh, 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 hold on, hold on. Whoa, 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 yo, what happened? Did your boyfriend do something? I think you're onto something, Isak. Did your boyfriend lie to you again? I would have broken up with him ages ago, but that's just me. Oh my gosh, are breakups that easy for you? Why is it the only solution to everything? Don't let your aggression out on me. Whoa. Isak, do something. <laughs> Tia, bestie, we understand you could be very upset, but tell us the details first, or we jump to the worst case scenario. So, everyone, breathe, calm down. Now tell us, Tia, what's wrong? You guys remember how hard he tried to get my attention when we first met, right? He treated me like a queen, but these days he's a completely different person. He forgets our dates, he hangs out with his friends, he's never free to talk on the phone anymore. He's always just so busy. He's different. That's why I kept saying to dump him! You deserve better! You don't stop! Let's listen to Tia and see what she has to say! Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry, sorry. Continue. He said he loved me. He said I was the only thing that mattered in this world. He said he would protect me. He said he'd always make me laugh. I truly thought our love would be forever, but all that's left is tears. You know what? I will never get men. Me too! That's why I kept saying, dump him! Stop! No, you're right. I think it's time to say enough. I've put so much effort into this relationship, but I'm getting nothing out of it. I think your love has to come to an end. It was a powerful song for Girls' Day at this particular era. I didn't even realize that it was 2010, mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. Nothing Lasts Up, Tare Jobaya, was the song that we were looking at. It was the first song Hedy officially joined the team with. And uh, let's look at the lyrics, because the lyrics are kind of all over the place as well. Mm, mm, mm. Can I, can I, can I, can I hop ahead. in this? So I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to bring in, uh, in the lyrics, there's three common excuses that, okay. in relationships that you hear. Did you mark that too? That might be why. Uh, one of them is, I, I'm, I'm mentioning one of them. Continue. Okay. Well, uh, okay, so uh, I'll do the second or the first one. I don't know. So these are three things that you hear a lot if you're in a relationship. Na yakusogi so. These are all basically like pinge, right? Yeah. Like uh, uh, excuses, excuses. Excuses to not meet or whatever. Na yakusogi so. I have plans. a commitment or plans. You know how hard it is for me to say, like translate that because yakusogi is like a commitment or a mm. promise. And then in Korea, we don't say that in the States. We say I have plans. Yeah. But in Korea, we say na yakusogi so. So you know how long of a brain fart I get Whenever I try to say something, I'm like, Daiyakusuki, so what is that in English? What is that in English? Uh, I have a I have plans. I have, a, <laughs> I, have, I have previous, what? No, that sounds, the, I have plans. Oh, there we go. I have plans. <laughs> but you know, but you know, if you were to, if you were to translate, I have plans in English into Korean, it'd be, not in Kebegi, so. That, that sounds weird. Right, like, that sounds like a business worse. something, mm. you know. Yeah, but na yakusugi so. So that basically means I have plans. Yakusugi is promise, but it also means plans, but, it, you know, so. Just remember so. that, fam. Yeah, um, <clears throat> oh, here's another good one. 
배터리 없어. Have you heard that before? Yeah. Oh. Uh, I mean, not really? in a relationship situation, but like I'd imagine uh-huh. that, you know, I've heard people say that. Oh. We, we've actually done that, I think, in, in skits before here before. Mm. Talking about my battery also. Mm. I have no battery, like, in my phone, so mm-hmm. I can't contact you. Mm. But uh, I, mean, I missed your call because mm. of it, when they distinctly turned off their phone. Yeah. So this is normally an excuse when they turn off their phone mm-hmm. on purpose. And then, you're like, you know, the girlfriend or significant other is like... Like, why didn't you pick up your phone? Why was your turn- phone turned off? Oh, I didn't have any battery. Yeah. Which is kind of ridiculous in Korea because every single bar yeah. you go to, they have chargers yeah. for every phone. And now it's at the point now where like, you can, almost everyone I know has like a portable battery like yeah. for their phone. I'm like, listen. There's th- no excuse. Yeah. It's getting, like, it's easier now to, um, you know, contact people. And in the same way. Uh, you can't escape contacting people mm. either, you know, mm. unless you look like a total liar. Mm. What about you, Do You got anything good? Um, so I just like this point. So when it was mm. 나 약속 있어, 믿길 놓고. So like, I like the word 믿기. Mm. It's kind of like fishing or like bait. Mm. bait. So I liked how they kind of put in like you're baiting with that. It was a weird, mm. like it doesn't make sense in English, mm. but it's a weird play on words that I really wanted to mention. Mm-hmm. Um, the second thing that I wanted to mention was That's so, a, that's a very Korean thing too. Mm-hmm. So this means are you playing dead? dead. Um, how long are you gonna sleep for? Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Pretty much so like yeah, like you know, your significant other in this situation, the boyfriend, uh, didn't pick up his phone last night after drinking. His phone was turned off. Then he went you wake up the next morning, you try calling him, his phone is on. But he's still not picking up. And later he's like texting you, oh, I just caught up. It's like... I get so mad. But it's like four in the afternoon. And it's just like, how long are you sleeping for? I mean, Sir. If, if I drink, I sleep till four sometimes. I mean, depends. I mean, uh, if it's... <laughs> There's a little bit of a different scenario here. Like you, yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. You would never leave your girlfriend like that. Yeah, you know these things. You, you, know you would... Yeah, you would... Mm. But I, I like the way that you're going with that because it's not just that, it's what they're saying afterwards. So, right. So, like, making you scared. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, it's like, oh, I think I'm going to be late, causing me to panic or giving me a little mm-hmm. bit of a, you know, a scared attack. Mm-hmm. So, you oh. turn off your phone in excuse of, ah, uh, uh, you know, like, uh, you turn off your phone uh, or, like, you know, after, like, oh, I didn't have battery, so. Right. You turn off your phone. Mm-hmm. So these are all. So you're. It's like if this happens in the same situation, you're baiting the fact that you're going to do this, and now these are just like you know yeah. a chain reaction mm-hmm. or the domino effect of you cheating. This is this is a very this the, the lyrics of this song are actually pretty deep. Now that you explain it like that, yeah, they're you know very I mean? deep. Yeah, like honestly, like Miki. I didn't even know what that meant. So, <laughs> <laughs> so like, we have you here to do that a little bit more, you know, harder things. Yeah, Biki is bait. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Oh, yeah, so I didn't even know that. <laughs> um, but the the reason why Tia kind of had like a monologue with this entire skit was because this is kind of what the lyrics are. You know, the guy is constantly promising like, oh, I'm going to make you happy. Like in the pursuit of mm. things of mm-hmm. like, you know, he when he was trying to pursue her, he said everything. He said, I'll give you the world. I'll make you happy. I'll make you laugh. I'll do this. I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll buy you flowers every day. And then now that you're like dating, it just changes all of a sudden. Uh, there's speaking of this, there's a, a commercial okay oh either it was a commercial or it was a music video or something i just saw it like an edited version Mm -hmm. but uh this girl is narrating it and she says uh it's come to the point where my husband and i have decided to make uh, to to split so Mm. we're getting a divorce and uh the like somebody else says but you guys are such a happy couple and then it goes back to uh when both of them are so the it's like the setup is the wife is a stay-home wife mm. right uh where the husband is working they don't have any kids um but you can sense like a tension or like you know like a loss of connection between them mm-hmm. and so the husband has like the divorce papers and he was just like okay like, we need to split and she was like okay i will give me a month though mm-hmm. and in that month do everything as i ask and then i'll divorce you oh okay. and it was all the things that he said 
Than he would do during, in his proposal. Oh. I will give you a morning kiss every morning to wake you up. I will give you a hug every day before and after I leave the house. Uh, I will always hold you when I go to sleep. I will try to, you know, like these subtle things that he said while he proposed to her. He never mm. did. But he ends up falling more and more in love with her mm-hmm. again and by she's the end of the out. month. And she's falling out. And then it ends. And, this and they is a get commercial? to work. I don't know if it was a commercial. I don't know where it came <laughs> it's out, but a deep that commercial. But that particular video became really popular oh. and it's like still like a like a meme type wow. short that keeps like going around. And it's a Korean one. And after watching that, I was just like, Yeah, see, see? <laughs> it's a stroke of genius. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but apparently it just it kind of just shows like, uh-huh. you know, both parties need to make mm. an effort in a relationship. Obviously, that's not happening. <laughs> right. Oh so where did the topic lead for us in the surveys today? Tia, what kind of surveys did you bring in? So I brought in like the most common like lies in a relationship. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and yes, yeah, stuff like that. Okay. So since you said that you were bringing up the most lies, mm-hmm. do you feel okay. white lies? Like there is such thing as white lies right. that are uh, healthy for mm-hmm. a relationship. Right, 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 right. What do, they, what do I think about um, them? So do you think they're like, okay. So like no. little white lies in a relationship. I think that you have to have a very good handle on what constitutes a white lie versus a not white lie. If you can find that balance and you know the difference, then yes. Okay. Tia? No. Um, I, then I ask you, is not telling mm. a significant other something a lie? No. Okay. Uh, Unless for me, like it's not a lie, but if it's something that your conscious is telling you, you should say, then obviously you should say it. Right. So I'm kind of leaning towards hmm. like, you know, if there's something about yourself or, you know, your family history that you just never said, mm. they've never asked, mm. but you just never said it. Uh, if let's say, you know, you had something fa- like a family, like maybe your family's like in deep debt, mm. but you never said anything. Joel never asked. But then one day, like Joel found out. And Joel's like offended. Like, why did you lie to me? Technically, that's not lie. a lie. Yeah. Yeah, that's what that's what I was kind of going for as well. I agree. I think it's different if you're married. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because like that family debt sort of thing that can be have a big impact if you're married. Like that becomes a thing. You know what okay. I mean? It could be. So, so like, even though nobody asked, uh, so no. it's not a lie. <laughs> it's a different spectrum. I think it's okay. not a lie, but it is something that. If the other person is going to be involved, Mm -mm -mm -mm. hiding it from them is wrong. So deceiving them is wrong. Yes, it's deceiving. Okay, 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 okay. But if you don't say something that they didn't ask, I don't think that's deceiving. Okay. But if they're involved, it is. Right, right. Because if they're getting married, that's always going to be involving them. Okay. Well, I think that that, I have to say the same thing for this, like when someone doesn't ask, right? And you don't tell them, is that a lie? I think that's also what I mentioned earlier about what the... If you can draw the line what between what is a white lie and what is not, you know mm. what I mean? Like something like that. Like I don't know. Yeah, it's different it, for it's, everyone because mm. why, that's why I just say lying is lying, mm. like white lie or not. Mm-hmm. 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 I mean, if if for whatever reason whatever they're did not they're not telling me uh, affects me in some way, mm. then I think that it should be even though I don't ask, you should say something. Yeah, you know what I mean. Okay. Like so, what are know. some common lies? Okay, so. I have it in men and women mm-hmm. before marriage and during marriage. Okay. I'll tell you if this is true. Okay. <laughs> so I think it, it seems pretty obvious though. While you're dating, the most common lies for men is the reason why they broke up with their ex. <laughs> okay. So like to make themselves look not as bad. Ah, uh, so if they got dumped, they're like, oh no, she broke, like, you know, I broke up with her. Like, yeah, no, or, okay, okay, okay. or it's like, for, for instance, or maybe perhaps let's just go all the way out there. They cheated and they said, oh, we just had a difference oh, in personality, that kind okay. of thing. Oh. Um, second one is they over show their like specs. So like, oh, I'm, my hobbies are basketball and I like to go to the library and, and read books. They, they, Liar. <laughs> There's no such thing. They try to make themselves look good. Mm-hmm. And the third one I found is very... Um, <laughs> it makes sense with this song today. They pretend like they like everything that you like. Uh, Don't do I, that, lady or gentlemen. Because you will find yourself uh, terribly bored eventually. I feel that the willpower to want to learn or want to be included in your significant other's interest is great. Mm-hmm. Anything else after that is just 
that in itself is a lie. Yeah, and it only lasts for up to like at least a year mm-hmm. at longest. There's a facade that eventually you're going to have to throw away because like it's just too much work. You yeah, know? <laughs> yeah. And for women, funny enough, it's hmm. similar, like pretty much everything's similar. But the one difference is that they try to give that. I think this is done in Korea, too. So mm-hmm. it's they want to give the lady vibe so like i can cook i like to cook i like to take care of you i like to clean. i can't yeah i can't drink <laughs> i they, can't drink oh my, oh my god oh my god emphasizing their fem- feminine side uh, i think uh, do you guys do that though i can't i don't i mean i can't imagine <laughs> either of you guys doing that you can't like that's like, why they sm told me not to talk when i did interviews oh, because really? I, my yeah no bad Hola a todos, ¿cómo están? Estamos escuchando Arirang Radio desde Buenos Aires, Argentina. Where are you listening from? Let us know. Leave it at arirangradio.com. All right, it is chaos day. It, it is a little chaotic today due to the topic at hand. Uh, the song today is Girls Days Nothing Last Up, Tare Jobaya. And uh, Tia gave us some common lies of, it seems, Korean men and women that mm. will uh, give each other. Mm. Um, Joel, what did you prepare? So I wanted to talk about... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Fatal mistakes men make when dating, and there's three of them. And okay. I wanted to know what you guys thought about it because some of the the first one, especially, like I, I feel like I, I could I could see that being a thing. Okay. So I'm gonna explain three, and I want to hear your guys' feedback. Okay. So okay. the first fatal mistake that men make when they're dating, you invest way too much at the beginning. Mm. You say, say for example, I'm dating someone, right? I just started dating someone. I really like this person. Um, And at the beginning stages, I like this person more than she might like me, Uh right? So I invest everything into it to try and get her to like me. And then at some point, she likes me. I like, and then, but I'm starting to fall out of love with that yeah. person. And then, but she's like really deep in it because yeah. of everything that was invested at the beginning. So this is the thing. Is this even true? Because I feel like this is just physically impossible. You think so? I've seen it so many times. I, I have as well, but it's just kind of like, <laughs> Mm. <laughs> I mean, I it believe just, it's called love bombing. Right, but it just feels like an excuse a lot of mm. times. Um, where, yeah, I understand, like, you know, you're courting somebody, so you're trying to get their attention and stuff like that. And then now when the girl... It just... Yeah, I know that certain people just go for the catch, but it's just it's just like... I don't know. know. I think it's implying that you should you should not invest everything in it. You should beginning. pace yourself. Yeah, like I know. And self-control. I'm not, right, like, don't... I'm not one for mind games in relationships, but if pacing yourself and having an open conversation line with your significant other, I think is very crucial. Mm. If that happens, this doesn't happen. I think Mm. there's two different things that happen. So one, if they are losing their feelings, when the girl's starting to get feelings, that's a different story. Mm. When they still have feelings but have no energy to continuously do these things, that's normal. Right. Like I can see that happening. That's why you need to pace yourself. Right, right, mm. right, right. But if it's the one, like ah, uh, the first one, mm. the first one, they didn't love this person to begin right, with. Right, right. It wasn't. It wasn't about love. It was just about that. Just wanting, yeah. to have that person, right, have right. something you can't have. Right. Mm. Okay. What else? Okay. So this is something that like. It's kind of hard to explain in English, but like mitang, like pushing and pulling. Yeah, the mind games. Yeah, yeah like like um, the way that men play the push and pull game uh-huh. can like completely dive bomb a relationship. Oh, one hundred percent. I agree. Yeah. But I, I'm always no like, mind games. Men, but, women, both of you, stop. Wait, can you guys give me a situation like what a mind game, like a mitang mind game, would be? Like, get, like give me a situation because I don't really. I've Joel, always you texted had a hard... me at ten a.m. because you're up, you're at going to work and everything. I see the text, I read it, but I distinctively wait mm-hmm. until I purposely wait. Okay. Till like twelve, one. Maybe even three, four. Oh, like it's premeditated. Yeah. And then you're okay. just like, oh, I just saw your text when you saw it earlier. Even though you can now see when someone reads your text. Right. I mean, okay. well, you can look at it before. Right. Yeah. 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 Oh. yeah. Mm. But so like, and then you, you purposely ask, you know, answer later. So you're, you're playing mind games. You're trying to keep them on a leash. You're not trying to mm. answer too quickly. You're purposely, intentively doing certain things to keep them. 
Not okay, too okay. close, not too far. Mm. It's kind of like on a leash. It's like, oh no, come here. Oh no, no, okay, no, no, no. Wait, explain to me then why you guys think you guys, you know, as women think that a guy would do that. Why do they do that? I, I mean, I don't know. I've seen players do it a lot. Oh yeah. Oh, but like, if but you're actually in a relationship, why would you do something like that? Like, I, I don't know. That's why I'm asking. It's, I don't. I can't. It's oh, really. I've seen it before. I think it's because they want to be the one in control. In, charge. in control. Like they don't want, so when you're doing that, usually the other person is the one who's gonna like you more mm-hmm. because you're giving them enough for them to mm. come chasing like for you. Like a carrot on a carrot on a string. Yeah. Okay. So like, hmm. insecure people do this, or people who want to be loved, mm-hmm. or people who are afraid of being left, do this often. Mm. You know what I mean? Here she comes with the uh, mm. with the deep <laughs> psychology. <laughs> And that's why we love when Tia mm. brings this. Okay, so what's the third one? The third one is being way too cynical. Oh, I hate this. What? <laughs> like being way too cynical. Like I can't be around cynical people. Really? It it brings the whole mood down. Mm, but like oh. like when it comes to like positivity or like mm-hmm. even the vibe of a place, one person can change the whole vibe mm-hmm. if you're dating someone who's cynical no thank you that's the thing like i, I think you me and you or you know all three of us rather we're all very bright mm. and like positive people mm. so like i i this is like the one way to bring me down is if you're really 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 negative like, i've seen it that literally will drag and me there's down a difference between being honest and mm. being cynical yeah. that's the thing so like a lot of these cynical people say i'm just honest no, no. you're mm. not you're honest. deliberately doing that to- you're being an yeah. A- uh, <laughs> we, we're running out of time, no. Joel. So what else did you bring? Um, yeah, and uh, I just wanted to quickly cover like why do men betray committed women? Mm. Um, and I think uh, one of the big ones is uh, as a as a woman, like a lot of the times you go into this relationship. Mm-hmm. Are you going into a relationship to be their lover mm. or to be their mother? So oh I hell think, no! I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, saying, like, <laughs> I'm just gonna throw this. Like, we don't have to. I'm gonna say it real quick. A lot of the times, though, the thing is, why men leave women like this is because once they're getting so much like love and care, mm-hmm. some men I heard not, <laughs> I heard they tend to think, oh, I'm this good. That's why I'm getting this treatment. I can mm-hmm. get even better. <gasps> you know what? That was actually in there also. <laughs> and I never, I, I I have said in the past, like a lot of women, the reason why we like like bad guys at certain ages is because we want to kind of quote unquote change them. That's kind of like bringing out like the motherhood, mm. like, you know, taking care of somebody like, oh, they're, you know, I'm going to be there for them. But uh, that, that in itself is in a relationship. Uh, that's kind of, I've made a thing. Like if Joel and I are dating, I'm never going to nag at him. Mm. You're an adult. I'm gonna tell you what I don't like, right. and if you can, sin- if you insist on doing mm. that, you have a problem. Yeah, right, right, right. Because you're deliberately doing this, mm. though you yeah. know it's not good. Right. So it's not my position mm. to nag at you as your partner. We are partners. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm not your mother. Do not be somebody's mother. She's so passionate. <laughs> we have to leave because this song's been playing in the background for way too long. <laughs> we will see these two back next week. Bye. Bye. I hope you enjoyed listening to K-Poppin's Casa Love today. Don't forget to come back for more fun content on Arirang Radio. 